Hey YouTube, J Green three hundred two. I have no idea what to call this. Maybe blinders. Yeah, blinders. Talk about information. No products. No cool gadgets. No tips and tricks on this one. This might get a little long-winded, so half you might just want to just pass on this one. For the rest of you, we're going to talk about blinders. And the best way I can approach this subject is to, to, to phrase it like this. If you're a Catholic and you go to church every Sunday, you have a preacher that is giving you a view of the world and you were to sit there and you were to listen not speak, not discuss not um, challenge you are there to sit and hear a very limited scope view every Sunday if you're Jewish then you have a rabbi that is doing the same thing and if you're Muslim you have an, a, a mom or whatever the equivalent is doing the exact same thing. When you have blinders in your perceptions, this is why if you put the three together, they will fight. Where am I going with this? If you watch Fox News, if you watch CNN, you starting to get my point? If you're watching this video, you're looking for information, you're looking for ideas. Hopefully, if you're watching my videos, you're looking for well thought out, good ideas that are being missed. So I'm going to hit you with a big one, but I have to, to, to set the stage before I get there. So, I'm all over the place, and I still haven't really made a point. I'm talking about blinders. Where the hell is he going with this? Stick with me, folks. If you are like me, you might be either on Facebook or YouTube or in, in various other places where people of like minds are together on like subjects. Be careful about how you take in that information, and I will give you some examples. Have we not all seen YouTube videos that have been specifically cut and spliced? Um, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, police brutality. They'll show the shocking part. They'll replay it in slow motion. They'll replay it three times to reinforce the point that they're making that you know, this individual was, you know, a victim of police brutality. But they don't balance it with the fact that the individual that's getting their head slammed has spent the last five minutes resisting arrest. They cut the footage out. They don't tell you what led up to what you see on the camera. They show you half the truth because it is couched in a way that serves the point in the message they are delivering. You have to be very, very careful with what you accept for information. I see this a lot in YouTube. Usually they're playing music or they have couched their, their phrases in such a way as it is obvious that they have a one-sided view on something. Now, what prompted this? I have been in, on Facebook, I've been on two different prepper groups where it was a group of preppers that all gotten together. You have to get invited into the group. And on the first group I got into, um, maybe 30 or 40 people. 
it took two days before I removed myself from that group and wanted nothing more to do with them because they were Walmart shoppers calling themselves preppers and they were all talking about what new plastic Chinese crap to buy to prep for. Well, got to go. Okay. So now we start to get into meat and potatoes of why I'm making this. I had to wait about 48 hours to clear my head, to get my perspective, to get my balance back. I had gotten into a, a, a prepper group on another one, the second one, had about 360 users. This one was actually pretty good. They were actually discussing some interesting stuff, and uh, I contributed, and, and everything was going well, and um, everything seemed to be fine. And then all of a sudden, I I made a post about chemtrails and the alumina that is getting in the the, the the snow, the water, and the soil, and the fact that you can't get it out, um, that the alumina is messing up the pH and it's going to cause problems with crop growth, uh, the fact that you can't boil the aluminum out of the water, the fact that aluminum in the brain causes Alzheimer's. And has anybody thought about this because they're measuring this in the soils? It's, it's not a rumor. It's, it's not a conspiracy theory they are finding the alumina in the trees, they're finding it in the soil, and they're finding it in the water, and they're finding it in the snow. It's measured. It's scientifically measured. And you're, the reports are out there. And they're, they're checking the soil, and they're seeing what's going on. Um, they know it's from the chemtrails. Well, my point wasn't the chemtrails. My point was, what do you do about the alumina? And how are you going to grow crops when the pH is all messed up in the soil? And what are you going to do about your water? Because it's it's in the snow. The snow melts, then it gets into the rivers. And it's a cumulative effect. Well, here's what happened. Well, we're not discussing that. And then my post got censored. Wait a minute. You're censoring information? So this is like a homeowners association, and the president is just going to sit down and tell everybody what color their garage can be and, and, and play this power trip? Okay, it's your group. Anything that I would have posted from here on out stops. You've just cost everybody all tips, tricks, and everything that I could have brought to the table, and I won't participate anymore. If you're going to censor what else are you going to censor? So I'm very careful about information, how it's supplied, and when everything is couched into a specific view, I start to get worried because that means you fear outside information changing what you think is reality. That's not the way it works. You look at reality and you adjust your thinking as to what you perceive it to be because reality is reality. So, where am I going with this? <clears throat> now we get into my prepping tip and the point of blinders and the whole nine yards. You can have guns, you can have ammo, you can have all your gear and everything, but that's only half the picture. Okay, it's half of it. The other half is knowledge, and I'll give you a couple examples. If you were taking the time to prep, take the other half of your time where you live. Look at the water system. How do you get water in your community as far as a systematic um, system within where you live? Do you have a water tank? How big is that water tank? Does it take electric pumps to pump the water up? How long and how many gallons will that thing provide pressure without that pump working before the water comes down, the pressure goes low, and there's no more water? Do you understand the system? Do you understand about how much time you have to tap that resource before it disappears? Point two. Do you understand your sewage system? If you have a, 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 a downstairs 
like I do, where you have a downstairs bathroom and you've got uh, something that's downstairs where you, you have, uh, it's like a basement environment, like in, in my case, um, this is a completely finished basement, but the temperature is a lot more regulated and cool. So this is a good place to store food goods because you can maintain around a 60 degree temperature and you get a longer li longevity out of your storing. I and mean, this all makes sense. Now, where am I going with this? Well, well, what the hell does the sewage system have to do with it? Okay, you flush that toilet, that poo and piss goes down a pipe and it goes to the end of your driveway and then it still has to go six miles or eight miles or ten miles to get to a sewage waste treatment facility. If the electric goes out and the pumps that pump the poo into the pools and, and does all the work, if that stops, how many flushes of toilets before the sewage starts pumping out of your toilet and onto the floor and it doesn't stop? Do you understand how your sewage system works well enough to understand the impacts of failure? You're starting to see my point. If you're storing all your prep materials downstairs and the back and the downstairs toilet all of a sudden, after four or five days, back floods with 400 gallons of, of sewage, and there's no way to clean it up, there's no way to get rid of it. It's not like you can get a serve pro to come out and clean up the sewage. Uh, it's not like you can get a, a shop vac because there's no electricity. And, and get rid of it. So you're stuck with 400 gallons or more because it could continue because there's people with upstairs toilets. There's there's the potential for a back feed. Do you understand your sewage system? Do you understand your electric system? Do you understand how power is distributed? Do you have natural gas? Uh, do you know where the pumping station is? Because if the pumps go out, how long before the pipe depressurizes. Systems. Understand systems in your community because these are the things that are going to affect you if things go bad. You need to understand these so you can understand where to prep, how to prep, when to prep, when to run, when to stay. Without this information, prepping is pointless. If you're not paying attention to the concentrations of alumina from chemtrails, and are not considering the fact that there's high con concentration of aluminum in your water and your soil, what good is having heirloom seeds if they won't grow because the alumina has changed the pH to neutral and your crops won't grow? That's a good question. Have you checked your, your filtration system to make sure that it can filter out the alumina particles? Have you accounted for the fact that there's a lot of alumina particles, and it all depends on where you are in the United States, Let's say you have a micron hiking filter, and that was going to be the way that you're going to, you're, you're going to and it's good for 15, uh, 1,500 gallons, okay. The alumina is going to block that filter much, much faster. So your 1,500 gallons may now be six or 700. You start to see where the outside affects the inside. If you're not paying attention to what's going on out in the world, then you're not calculating how well your preps are countering those issues. I'll give you another one. Japan, the nuclear reactors. Two things happened. They had an earthquake and they had a tsunami. So the nuclear reactor's sitting there. It's sitting there cooking fuel and everything. What happens? Earthquake. All the power lines get cut. Now you're producing a gazillion gigawatts of power and you have no load. Shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. You can't produce that much insane amount of electricity and have nowhere for it to go. They had to shut it down. So they start pulling the fuel rods out. Well, they had two parts of a problem here. They had to shut it down, but they were also storing used fuel rods, and this is done in a swimming pool sized area, and you need uh, water chillers because you're chilling that cooling water. The rods are insanely hot and stay insanely hot for years. Well, when the electric got cut, they went to go to kick on the generators and uh oh, the tsunami flooded the generators. So the generators don't work, so they can't cool the water. 
Chernobyl and Japan had the same problem. If you cannot cool that cooling tank or that cooling pool where those fuel rods are, within three days those fuel rods will completely boil an Olympic-sized swimming pool full of water and then you will have Chernobyl. The Japanese were not stupid. They built it near the ocean. The last ditch option for them was to flood it with seawater, which is exactly what they did. They had an unlimited amount of cold seawater to keep those fuel rods from just basically irradiating half of Japan or more. Um, so here's an interesting point. If the grid goes down, how close are you to a nuclear reactor? Oh, well, we don't talk about that in this prepping thing. We talk about we talk about going to Walmart and storing food. We're, we're, we're not going to get into all this other shit. Blinders. You're starting to see my point. And this includes me. I try to go all over the place. I will give you stuff going all the way to, do you understand how a nuclear reactor cooling pool works, to chemtrails to I'll go anywhere because if it's out there and it's a potential problem with my prep then it has to be calculated into my prep I do not couch my views in any particular area other than common sense be careful about the information that you take in think about the information that you take in and in the context in which it is presented and remember to be a critical thinker factor everything in pay attention to what is going on around you pay attention to your systems how close are you are you to a prison how close are you to a nuclear power plant how close are you to a military base how close are you to a, a, a refinery system how close are you to a, a major port um, all of these things factor in to your prep they all factor in Pay attention to these things. It's half the equation. And if you are on YouTube and, and everybody's couching just one thing and that's it, or if you're on Facebook and they're saying we're only going to look at this part, remember that they're narrow-minded. They're only going to look at this. You need to go collect the information on everything that they're filtering. That's my point. No cool gadgets, no cool tricks, <clears throat> no little... This is this is a I'm not this is not a tactical this is a strategic point of view. And I'm trying to give that point of view because I keep seeing everybody do the same stupid thing. You pay attention to everything. If you don't have the time or the will for all to pay attention to everything, go lay down and die. Because you're too stupid to survive. It's complicated, it's going to be difficult. If you ever actually get to it, you you're going to need every single advantage you, you can get. You have the freedom and the luxury right now to sit there and think in creature comforts with electric and all the blessings. Use it properly. Because when the lights go out, you're out of time. Thanks for listening.